Hello, welcome to the Craft Tags Magic Setter Tutorials. My name's Ellie and today I'm going to show you how to do an afterthought thumb. So this is a tube that's been knitted to actually make them into socks but I decided to transfer this one into a mitten. There are several tutorials I've got that split a whole massive sock tube that you knit from 100 grams into two pairs of socks but I've used one of those tubes um, to make this. At the end of the tutorial for the thumb I will explain a little bit more about how I add the rib on either end of this particular tube. So here I have two sock tubes that I've knitted. This one I've cut the thumb into already and this one I'm going to do on this video. This end here I've got a slightly less rib than the bottom. Um, that's just personal taste, you can do as much rib as you like and I'll explain about the rib at the end of this bit. So first of all you need to decide where you're going to place your thumb now I think that um, if you have two inches from the top you're going to end with, up with it coming to about here but if you add it three inches it'll go to your knuckles so I'm measuring two inches for my example but you could do a little bit further down so that it comes up to your knuckles. So I'm just going to measure there um, where it's from. You could actually count the rows as well but just for quickness and ease I'm just going to measure. So I measure two inches from the top of the sock in my case and I'm just going to snip one strand of yarn there. So I'm going to keep my thumb there so I know what point I've snipped and then I get my darning needle and carefully unpick it. So this is the same action that I do if I was splitting a sock tube as well. You can, of course, pick up the stitches before you undo them, but I find that I get in a bit of a pickle when I do it that way. I find this way is a lot easier. So I'm carefully unpicking so that I go six stitches this way on both top and bottom. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to work my way this way. Now I've got six stitches at the top and six stitches at the bottom. If your gauge is looser or tighter, um, what I do is measure around your thumb and then measure how many stitches per, per inch and calculate the right width for your thumb but if you're using a fingering weight yarn 12 stitches on the top and 12 stitches on the bottom um, should work nicely but you can play around with it a bit um, so we want one two three four five six seven eight nine ten two more stitches so there we go we have 12 stitches on the top 12 stitches on the bottom. I find with this length of yarn that you've got left from doing this that's plenty to sort of sew in. If you were doing it any smaller gap you might not have quite enough length to actually sew in so you might find with DK yarn you might not be able to do this but I've not actually tried it. So I'm now going to go and pick up those stitches with the same needles I used for the rest of the mitten making sure that they're on the correct orientation on the needle. I've just turned it around, I'm just going to do the same on this side. Right, so that's 12 stitches on the top and the bottom. I'm going to turn the work around to this side again. And gauge this front needle. I'm going to start knitting. So I have um, matching yarn to match my rib. First round I'm going to knit and pick up stitches. So I'm going to knit these 12 stitches on the front. And then I'm going to pick up a couple of stitches either side here
just making sure that when I have picked up a stitch it doesn't leave a big gaping hole. So I've picked up two that side. I'm going to turn the work over and knit across this side. I find it's good to do a knit row when you're doing the pick up as well because you end up without the pearl bumps interfering with the rib. And at the end here I'm going to pick up a couple of stitches So we're back round to the beginning of the round. I've put a marker in there to denote the beginning of the round. I'm going to do the first sort of setup round for the rib. And there's some decreases on this row because we've done them extra rounds at the sides. I have tried cutting into the work a little bit less and then having those additional stitches just as the normal thumb but I did find that you had a little bit you were a little bit short on the yarn when you're actually sewing the ends in of the original um, sock tube so I found this is a little bit easier so first of all I just do a knit two together knit one and then I continue in a knit two purl two um, rib pattern until I get almost to the end of this needle. So you go all the way across until you two stitches from the end. And then I'm going to purl two together. So you're continuing the sort of knit and purl pattern, but I've decreased one each side there. I'm going to turn the work around. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So knit two together and you'd work exactly if you're doing magic loop you'd want to keep it tight at the edges exactly if you would if you were just knitting a normal tube um, and we've just done knit two together knit one and then we're going to work across this needle until you are two stitches from the end of the needle. So we're two stitches from the end and I'm just going to purl those two together. So we've now got to the point where we can just do two by two rib um, and I do that for about eight rows for this. So I'll do that knitting and then I'll come back to you. So I've now knitted the eight rows of the two by two rib and we're going to do the cast off. So this is a nice stretchy bind off so that it is nice and stretchy around your thumb. I knit two in pattern, whatever it is underneath, and then knit two through the back loop. And then purl one, purl two through the back loop, purl one, purl one through the back loop. So when you've done the first side, you can turn it round, pull your needle through and continue. So I'm now left with one stitch on the needle. I'm going to leave a few inches, or I say about six inches, snip the yarn. I'm going to take that needle out and pull the yarn through that loop and you can see we've got a nice stretchy edge there and we just need to sew the ends in. Thread my end onto a tapestry needle and then you have this sort of funny step here which you can get rid of by going into sort of edge here. I tend to go in and out a couple of times just at the top there to close it up and then you can't tell where the beginning and the end is. Turn it to the inside and then I will sew the end in. So to sew ends in rib I normally go into one of the knit columns and just keep scooping so that you've, you're into the side of the knit stitch on the left side 
normally go um, four or five times so I'll go in another two of that row Oops. and then for the next stitch above that I'll go through the two legs and then I'm going to come back down this side of the stitch and that secures it nicely because you don't need it to be stretchy in that direction you can just you can just go through the legs um, of the knit stitch and there we are that's um, sewn in nicely just snip the end and then we've got the ends on the inside to sew in so I'm going to turn it inside out so I'm going to thread this end onto a needle sometimes you get sort of a little hole so I'll try and mimic a duplicate stitch through these stitches to completely close that up and then I'm going to do a duplicate stitch into the fabric so there's little clusters of four pearl bumps I've just done one duplicate stitch so this next cluster has got these four stitches go into the top one and down through the left and then back in through the right and up through the top again and I do that about three times that should be okay and a little tip is that I sometimes use the end of the needle with the hole in to push the yarn through if I'm getting a bit short on yarn. I think we can manage one more. Or even just the half, that should do. That should be nice and secure. You can see we've got a thumb gusset now and these will keep my arms nice and warm so there is a tutorial where I show how I split a hundred gram sock tube into four sections and make two pairs of socks out of those um, with this sock tube I've made one pair of socks and then I've got two um, tubes where the pink yarn is where I wanted to make a pair of mittens instead I picked up stitches obviously on both ends and I actually just knitted a 2x2 two two rib here and I knitted 12 rows. I did the same cast off as the thumb on the arm part of the mitten. Because this is getting a little bit bigger and it only just sort of fits me here, I thought I'd do some increases. So this is a 60 stitch sock tube and I increased to 72 stitches. So I knitted in pattern 5 stitches and then I did an increase um, on the first row every 5 five stitches to make 72 stitches and then I just did the 2x2 two two rib. I did that for 15 rounds and I did the same cast off, the stretchy cast off here as well. So hopefully you'll be able to make sense of that. So I'll refer you to the original tutorial where I split a sock tube into four sections um, for the bit that precedes this section where you actually tell you how to split your tube but it's a very similar method to where I unpicked the stitches for the afterthought thumb. Um, there's two parts of the original video where I split the tube into four pieces and then when I did the afterthought heel in the second part so there's those two parts that you can go and look at as well. So this is what the mittens look like on with both of them on. They come nearly up to my elbow um, but of course if you've got a different length of arm they might be slightly different so what you could do is actually if you split this tube into two um, you could get two shorter mittens out of it if you're knitting the cuff in a separate colour um, but I wanted to have some long ones because sometimes I wear three quarter length sleeves um, but not quite cold enough for a coat so these are ideal to pop on with a three quarter length top so there we go. Um, I've knitted these in some opal yarn. I will leave the number of the actual, what the yarn's called, in the description bar down below. I did sell it in my shop, but I'm afraid it's all sold out um, now. So that is the Afterthought Thumb. I um, hope you find it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye!